I'm an Eagle Scout, I'm a U.S. Army veteran, I'm a volunteer firefighter, and I'm a public safety instructor. I'm the second oldest of nine children. I come from a multiracial family. We're all adopted, and we were all adopted by a single parent, my mother. In, in April of 2009, my mother was diagnosed with terminal cancer, and she was given three weeks to live. My mother adopted nine children. She had laws changed in order to do that. She was an, a, an accomplished college professor. She worked for the Department of Defense, and she suffered through her last days. My older brother and my younger brother tried to give her marijuana-infused food so that she could kill the pain and be able to eat. She refused it because she believed through all this indoctrination that she was going to be arrested by the police and she was going to die in prison. My mother basically starved to death because she couldn't eat. It was then I realized there's something wrong. So at that point, I went online and I found LEAP because no one really seemed to want to listen to me. When, when I first became a LEAP member, I was interested in exploring medical marijuana, legalizing marijuana for medical uses. And when I ran into Jack, I overheard him talking to somebody about legalizing and regulating all drugs. And I thought he was crazy. I have, have been a drug warrior. I had a talent with it. I could find a drug house. I could talk my way into it, seize it, get a search warrant, and take the stuff out of there. And I thought he was a little crazy. But he showed me, and I hope to show you through this presentation, that the, the current drug policies are failing. Since 2007, almost 100,000 people in Mexico have been killed. Most dangerous nation on the planet is Honduras. 92 murders per 100,000 people, all attributed to this war on drugs. This is policy that the United States made, it's spread to the rest of the world, and this is what's happening. Most of the people in jail are serving time for nonviolent drug possession offenses. It went from six, 65,000 in 1965 to 1.9 million in 2005. A dime bag can ruin your life in the United States. The amount of overtime, the amount of, of money we spent on the drug war is, is just incredible. As a police officer, it's unlimited. We get unlimited equipment, we get stuff that it was hard for me to get. I was in an infantry unit in the United States Army and it was hard to get some of this equipment the police departments get just randomly. We, my police department was looking for what they call a, a bear cat. It's a tank about the size of a house and it's on wheels. And the, the United States is giving them away. And if we could have gone to Hawaii and gotten it, we could have our own right now. Right now we're fighting over one out of Arkansas. We're failing to protect people from violent predators. In my department, there is one grant-funded dom domestic violence police officer. There's one. The bread and butter of police work in Southeast Connecticut is domestic violence. We have two full-time detectives that do narcotics, and the other six do narcotics. Because it's exciting, it's cool, it's fun. It's, hey, you know what? I don't feel like going home tonight. Why don't we take a couple hours of overtime, and we'll go watch that house again. We, we tracked down an 11-year-old who was hiding from us because he didn't want to go home. And we found him, and we did a great job, and it didn't make the media. Why? Because they busted some guy with two, with two packets of heroin down the street and, like, $500 of cash on him. And they put out a press release on that. The truth is, the drug supply has increased. At the beginning of the drug war, largest drug seizures were measured in pounds. Five pounds of marijuana, a pound of cocaine. Today, single drug seizures are measured by tons. So the rate of the population addicted, and I love this, I love this part. In 1920, when everything was legal, one and a half percent of the United States population was addicted to drugs. When the war on drugs started, 1.3 percent. Today, after 43 years of, of drug murders and all that, and, and money spent and people going to prison, it's still the same amount of people addicted to drugs. So we've done nothing. What's the alternative to the war on drugs? How do we change that? How do we change the lives that we're losing or the lives that we're destroying? If we legalize and regulate drugs, 
will end the black market. Ending the black market will stop the violence, will stop the drive bys will stop the three-year-old from being in the newspaper because she was shot in the forehead while two gangsters were fighting over, were fighting over a street corner. If we end prohibition, there won't be needles there won't be needles floating around, people picking them up, using them. The spread of AIDS will slow down and the spread of all kinds of, um, all kinds of other diseases that are associated with it. Overdose deaths. If we control and we regulate drugs, if someone goes and uses it, they can, um, they can get, they can purchase, they know what they're purchasing. They know what, what they're purchasing is gonna be 1% or it's gonna be 60%. You, you probably know the Colorado, has legalized recreational marijuana. They are the perfect, they were the perfect experiment for this. They regulate it, they control it. They, there is a computer program that um, many of the companies in Colorado use that can track from seed to sale down to a hundredth of a gram of marijuana. Colorado is doing it properly and they show that it can be done properly. Like New Hampshire has uh, package stores, liquor outlets or whatever. It, we could form jobs that way. We could do it that way. We could have private enterprises that are bonded and insured to do that. Um, I know my city looked at, uh, we were hoping to get a marijuana grow in the industrial park when Connecticut um, legalized medical marijuana and our city politicians failed and other towns got it. Um, but there will be an industry and there will be an industry that is properly regulated, um, is very sterile. The guy in charge of the drug war in Switzerland said, this isn't working. This is not a criminal problem. This is a medical problem. So they opened up safe injection sites. In those safe injection sites, you can sign up. You sign up and say, I'm a heroin addict. And they say, okay, they give you a card. You can go to these sites three times a day. They give you a safe dosage out of a clean needle with a doctor in, in the building. So if you have an overdose, or you have a problem, you get medical care. And when you're ready, there's counseling available. That program started 17 years ago, and at the time, uh, that country had the highest rate of overdose deaths in the European Union. And since that program started, they have had zero. So they're giving away free heroin. What's better than free? Your drug dealer is not gonna pay you to take his product, so their violence is gone. Their unemployment rate for, for members of this program went from 75% to I'm gonna go 40, maybe it's 24%. I, I looked at the numbers, I'm sorry, I don't have it, but it, it dropped considerably. And people are going, instead of being pushed away, uh, Jack Cole told me that in the 1950s, right after alcohol prohibition was over, they were still pushing away alcoholics. You were still a pariah. Now we have AA, now we have programs, and now we say, hey, you're my brother, you're an alcoholic, you need some help. Come live with me for a little while, we'll get you straight. That's what we need to do with our drug addicts, because it's happening. And that's, we, we, can't, we cannot stop addi um, addictions from happening, but we can, we can change the way that they're ending. But like you said, addictions are all things. I play an online fantasy game, kind of like Dungeons and Dragons, and I lose hours. And, and my wife Katrina back here, knows. She sees the signs, you know, the trash doesn't get taken out and that kind of thing. And uh, like you said, it's, it's, uh, we have to kind of get rid of the, the shunning the people. So. Decriminalization is not the perfect answer. Portugal has decriminalized everything and their addiction rates have dropped considerably, but it's still criminal somewhere and there's still going to be that violence. So maybe if you get, in, in the state of Connecticut, if you were caught with less than half an ounce, it's a traffic ticket. It's a traffic ticket for $150. And if you get three tickets, you have to put yourself through rehab. Um, but you still have to buy this illegal drug. Leap says you have to go and tell your chief about this. And I handed him the paperwork and I said, this is who I am, this is what I'm about. He says, I don't agree with you, but I respect that. And I have never heard from him again about it. And, uh, I'm grateful for that. He continually gives me uh, more responsibility and um, gave me my own car. And Not that I take it home, but it, it's a big deal to get your own cruiser. LEAP speakers, people involved in LEAP are not uh, rogue cops. We're not um, disgruntled cops.
we are lawmakers, we are judges, we are lawyers, we are prosecutors. And when we start getting the message out, people start saying, I, I think that way too. I, I didn't know anybody else did. I, these are the guys I grew up to. They would get out, they would put their duty belt in their trunk, they'd play basketball with us. They'd grab you by the ear and take you home if you were out too late. We had sheriff's deputies where I'm from in upstate New York. And you knew them and you knew their names. And when the police car came, you ran at it faster than you run for the ice cream truck because you wanted to hang out with the police officer. Now we have this. Why do we cover our face? This isn't a real police officer, but I think it gets the point across. We have something similar to this in the back lot of our, our, of our police department. We now have what we call a Class C uniform. Sew on patch, sew on badges, nylon belts, sneakers, guys wear sneakers or boots. Boots are for soldiers, not for policemen. And I want to know how to bring it back. We bring this back by getting rid of the war on drugs. Thank you very much. Thank you.